Well, hello everyone and welcome to my modular arithmetic tutorial. In this video I'm going to be covering uh, the mod operator. Of course I'll give an overview of uh, uh, modular arithmetic in the beginning and then uh, 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 just repeat cover the mod operator and then give you some of the properties of modular arithmetic. Now, modular arithmetic, believe it or not, if you've never heard of it before then we actually use it in our day-to-day -day life. If you remember that clock on your wall or on your, on your kitchen wall, if you look at this clock over here, what I've done here, must have noticed, is I've actually removed the 12 that we normally see and I placed a 0 over there. Now, if you look at it, yeah, the 12 at the top has been replaced by a 0 and now if we count, we can say for example 1, 2 is 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and then if we reach there, then we say 0, or for example if we say 12 and then if we move on to 1, then we don't say 13 normally, yes? You know, that's in, in 12 uh, sort of uh, 12 hour format in the, in the war clock, yeah? We don't have 24 uh, 24 hours, so it's only 12, so there we, we don't say 13, we say 1 again, 2, 3, well that's modular arithmetic. Basically, this is how we count in modulo 12. In modulo 12, numbers are always between 0 and 11, so in general, in modulo n, the numbers are always between 0 and n minus 1. If you look here, I'm sorry, if you just we do the count quickly, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 0, and then 1 again, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I hope that makes sense. We go around and round and round, and numbers are always between 0 and n minus 1. Here we work with modulo 12, so the numbers are always between 1 and 11. So when we add 1 to 11, we arrive back at 0 and move on, and so on and so forth. The same is true, by the way, in any other modulus. So that 12 is called modulus. Modular arithmetic in modular arith arithmetic systems, this concept is true for any other modulus. I'm assuming here that mo modulus are positive numbers, so uh, above 0, so 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. So module, the modulus is always positive in the context of my video here. Remember, modulus is always positive. And by the way, we can always count backwards if we want. So for example, if we do modulo 7, then we, we say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. So minus 5, yes, minus 5 is actually 2 in modulo 7, yes? minus 5 is modulo is actually 2 in modulo 7 and the proof is because 0 now you must have noticed is actually sort of like 7 yes so if you move to the right that's positive if you move to the left that's negative so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and then 0 again if we move to the left now that's we go negative now we go minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 so 2 here there should be 2 here and that is minus 5, uh, uh, as we said, minus 5 is the, is the same as 2 in modulo 7. So just to recap, usually it's not so complicated, it's just a matter of getting your head around it, but in modular arithmetic, remember, numbers are never bigger than the modulus. The answer of a calculation or the result of a calculation is always in the range of 0 minus uh, I'm sorry, between 0 and modulus minus 1. Yes, so the result is always between 0 and modulus minus uh, 1. The easiest way to, conv to convert numbers in modular arithmetic is by dividing and taking the remainder. You're not familiar with the remainder? Well, the remainder is usually the integers left, left over after we divide. So, for example, if we divide 17 by 4, then the result would be the remainder is 1, and that's the that's what we're talking about here. The remainder is 1. Why? It's because 17 is 14, 4 times 4 plus 1, so 16 plus 1. You can do the reduction, of course, uh, always whenever the numbers are bigger than the modulus. So if the number is smaller than the modulus, then we'll come to that in the, in, in the next slide. But remember, always we do this reduction here by taking the remainder when the actual number 
is larger or bigger than the modulus now you must if you do programming then you must have seen or you must have used the mod operator well the mod operator the modular operator usually shown as mod or percentage so if you use, use java it's percentage in some other languages like for example uh, camel or obje objective camel is actually mod mod the second input m is called the modulus so the, the, the way we do it is we say n mod m so n is my input number m is my modulus and r is the remainder so in java you would say for example something like that and it's always an integer number so you would say for example int r equals uh, n percentage m m is your input number m is the modulus and r is the remainder and the percentage sign is the mod operator in some other languages as, as i mentioned it's actually mod m o d now r the output is called the remainder or the residue i'll come to that in the coming slides so to calculate the value of n mod m what we do is provided that n is positive now and n is larger than m so n is positive and n is larger than m we remove as many multiples of m as possible until we are left with an answer between 0 and m yes remember this we remove as many multiples of m as possible until we are left with an answer between 0 and m if i go back to the previous slide we said we said for example we divide 17 by 4 if i want the mod of 17 17 mod 4 then what i do is i remove as many multiples of 4 as possible from from uh, 17 until i am left with an answer between 0 and uh, 4 minus 1 so for example the nearest multiple of 4 to 17 is 16 and then we need 1 to reach 16 then 1 is our remainder that is the value we are interested in that's r here I hope that makes sense between 0 and m minus 1 always remember if it's if it equals uh, uh, m then the, the the remainder will be 0 so if I, if I for example here say give me 16 mod 14 then the answer will be 0 because 16 is a multiple of 4 I'm sorry give me 16 mod 4 then the answer will be 0 because 16 is a multiple of 4 now if n is negative is a negative number then what we do is instead of subtracting or taking away multiples of m now what we do is we add as many multiples of m as as needed until we have an answer between 0 and m minus 1 again so that should be n minus m minus 1 again where m is the modulus enough talking let's see some examples now let's find the results for example of 34 mod 4 so we mentioned before that um, the mod if if yeah the the input number is larger than the mod and the input number now is, is positive so what we do is we remove as many multiples of 4 as possible until we we are uh, we, we we have a value which is between 0 and 4 minus 1 ie between 0 and 3 so the nearest multiple of 4 to 34 is 32 because 8 times 4 or 4 times 8 is, is 32 and then we need 2 to reach 34 then that's our remainder or that's the result of the mod operator likewise for 19 mod 7 the nearest multiple of 7 is 14 19 minus 14 is 5 so the remainder is 5 if we have a negative number then what we do is we keep adding so we add 5 to 23 the, the nearest multiple uh, the nearest multiple um, of 5 to uh, minus 23 is minus 20 but if we do that we end up with minus 3 and if you remember we mentioned that the remainder is always larger than uh, is always between 0 and n minus 1 so the value needs to be positive yes remember this the remainder is always positive then what happens now is we add another 5 to that minus 3 and we end up with 2 so this should be 5 not 6 5 yes so minus 20 uh, 25 that that's the basically the 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 the, the, uh, <coughs> the nearest multiple 
is as you said minus 20 and we end up with minus 3 so we add 5 to that, another 5 to that I'm sorry we add or or we sort of uh, another 5 to that we end up with 2 likewise for minus 78 mod 9 the nearest multiple of 9 to minus 78 is minus 72 that's 7 times 9 is uh, is um, I'm sorry 8 times 9 is 72 but we will have minus 6 what we do is we add another 9 to that minus 6 so we end up with 3 as you can see here I hope that makes sense you can experiment with this using the same technique remember if n is negative you keep adding 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 until you end up with a positive number between 0 and m minus 1 between 0 and modulus the modulus minus 1 and if it's if n is a positive number then what we do is we just keep removing things until um, until we actually um, end up with a number which is between 0 and m minus 1 now if the input number if n is less than the modulus then the remainder is n itself so if n is remained here I'm assuming that n is larger or equal m yes where n is larger or equal I'm sorry n is larger not, not less than is n is greater than or equal m however and it was remember this if n is less than m then the remainder will be n itself so uh, the result of n mod m will be n itself yeah so r will be n if n is less than the modulus so for example if I tell you to give me 6 mod 9 then the, the remainder will be 6 uh, just another look at the examples and um, by the way this set of, of numbers between 0 and m minus 1 so when we worked with for example in the first slide when we worked with mod, mod, modulo with modulus uh, 12 we said we have numbers between um, 0 and 11 so 0 and 12 minus 1 that set is 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 usually called the least residues modulo n or zn so zn usually is the numbers between 0 and n minus 1 that n here should be a, a subscript so Z, z2 for example is 0 and 1 z6 is 0 1 2 3 4 5 z11 is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and so on and so forth so for a natural number n that is greater than 1 the modulo n residues are the integers the integers less than n so integers between 0 and n minus 1 in modular arithmetic in general a residue of an integer n in modulo uh, sorry a residue of an integer a in modulo n is the unique value of basically the remainder so the remainder is always greater than or equal 0 less than or equal n minus 1 uh, my if my number was n then I expect to have if, I'm, if my number is n and my modulus is n then I expect to sort of multiply n k times but by 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 uh, by a number k by an inch an integer number k and add a residue to have the value of I have explained what this is in my in a previous video or two if you go back to my uh, video, uh, video channel and look up um, Euclid Euclidean division or um, what else Euclid Euclidean division and um, <coughs> Uh, yeah, integer arithmetic then you should be able to find an explanation of what this exactly means uh, now some properties of modular arithmetic if you look at these three properties one two three if you look at these expressions what I have is he here is I have two numbers let's say a and B any two numbers a and B and we want to take the mod for the same mod n uh, what this expression here says that the result of a mod n plus b mod n the result of this addition if we do it mod n 
then it's equal to a plus b, the result of a plus b mod n. And if we take uh, an example, a equals 37, b equals 99, and n equals 6, then what we do is 37 mod 6 plus 99 mod 6, so we get the results of, of these two and add them up, so this one would be, for example, is 1, 37 mod 6 is 1, 99 mod 6 is 3, if we add them we end up with 4, 4 mod 6 equals 4. I remember when I mentioned that if n, if the number is less than the modules, uh, the modulus, then the result or the remainder is the number itself. That's the left side. The right hand side, for example, that's the left hand side, the right hand side is a, that expression equals a plus b mod n, so we add a and b, 37 plus 99 mod n. 37 plus 99 mod 6 is 136 mod 6, which is 4, so the result is exactly the same. For the subtraction, we have a mod n minus b mod n, and then the result of that mod n is the same as a minus b mod n. The same as a minus b mod n. And we can apply that again. 37 mod 6 minus 99 mod 6. So 37 mod 6 is 1. 99 mod 6 is 3. 1 minus 3 is minus 2. Minus 2 mod 6 is 4. Yes. There it was 4 mod 6 and the result was 4. Here, minus 2 mod 6. Remember, yes, now the number is less than the mod, but notice now the number is actually negative. And if you go back to this rule here, if n is a negative number, then we add as many multiples of m as needed to have an answer between 0 and m minus 1, 0 and the modulus minus 1. The modulus, remember, the remainder is always positive. So in this case, we add 6 to minus 2 and we end up with 4. That's we add multiples of 6. We only need one multiple to end up with a result between 0 and 5, 0 and 6 minus 1, i.e. 0 and 5. So remember, the result needs always to be positive. The remainder or the result of the mod operator is always positive. It always between 0 and m, i.e. the modulus minus 1. For the multiplication, again, a mod n times b mod n, the result of that mod n is the same as a times b mod n, you can work that out, 37 mod 6, that's 1, 99 mod 6, that's 3, 1 times 3 mod 6 is 3 mod 6, we end up with 3, but if we multiply 39, that's the, that's the left hand side, the right hand side is a times b, so 13, 37, I'm sorry, times 99 uh, is 3,663, 3, that value mod 3, I'm sorry, mod 6 is actually 3. I hope that makes sense. We are always interested in uh, addition, subtraction, and multiplication, and it's all done via this concept of uh, division with a remainder. The division with a remainder, or in modular arithmetic, this modular operator, the mod operator, as we've explained before. For this to make sense, again, please go back to my channel and look up Euclidean, Euclidean, Euclidean division, my video on Euclidean division, and on integer arithmetic in general. Thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll see you in one of my next videos.